first up was a hot lapping session. Now the hot lapping session will work a little bit differently this time. Because I'm gonna add 20 points to each score. And I I had to do that, right? I had to heat up the tires. It's a mandatory rule, okay? I had to heat up the tires. <laughs> Since we have more speed-based activities than handling activities, I am adding 20 points to the final score of each lap time just to try and balance it out. And the NSX here was struggling. I love the car. I love the look of it. It's a great leap in hybrid technology. But it's a little slow. And by a little, I mean a lot. It's not very fast in the whole lap time department. But the four-wheel drive does help it. Hybrid system does help it. This isn't quite fast enough around the corners. Doesn't quite have enough handling, I think. And the it can use a little more power. It has six hundred. It has a little under six hundred horsepower. So it's not bad in the power department, but it's also not very good. So I mean, it can use a little bit more, and it can use a little bit more handling. But I mean, it's a very nice car to drive. Just not quite fast enough. Now the 48 GTB is the Ferrari that is trying to live up to the 458 Speciale, which I would argue is one of the best supercars made in the last 10 years. It's a phenomenal car, the 458. And the 488 is just kind of there. It's just a heavier 458. It's not better in any way, really. It has a bit more power, has much has bit more power, much better brakes, I will say, has very, very good brakes. But around the corners, it's just a heavier 4 or 5, it's not as good to the corners. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm also not a huge fan of the looks, I think it was a little strange. But, it's lap time was very slow. It got beat by a $95,000 Corvette. Yep. Legendary Ferrari got beat by a $95,000 Corvette. That says it all. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I like the brakes on it, but that's about all I like. Um, it's just not as good to the corners. And if, if, if it had the same handling as a 458, was a bit lighter and had more power, then it would be a perfect car. But, it only has the more power and better brakes. That's all it's got. And that's not enough to propel it high up on the leaderboard. And our leader was not this. This was very close. This was the second place. But this was not our leader. Now we go to the Porsche 911 GT2 RS. But each of the four GT and the 911 are very similar. They're both mid-engine slash rear-engine. All three wheel drive. Lots of grip. Incredible brakes. Pretty good speed, each of them has 6 hard horsepower or more. Only difference is V6 versus inline 6. So, yeah, it's very interesting how have these two similar yet very different vehicles compare, and they're very close. They're very, very close between the two of them. But the 911 would just beat that for I say just, it will, it will beat it by a bit, so a tenth of a second, but... It is very close between these two, and I'm, I gotta say, I love the look of both of them. They handle very well. Uh, acceleration's good, braking is very good. I would argue, besides maybe the GT2 and maybe the Viper ECR, the GT has the best brakes here. So these two cars are the two best brakes, I will say. And it's just a phenomenal machine. And as I said earlier, the winner is the 911 GT2 bars with a 113.385. Very good showing from that 911. Um, the older 911 had a problem with lifting up the front wheels. This one no longer has that. It's phenomenal to drive. Absolutely perfect machine. Second place will go to another proving machine, the Ford GT with a 114.0. Very good showing from that. Um, again, incredible car. Third place is a bit of a surprise for me. Um, the Lamborghini Aventador SV, 14.5. Very good showing from that vehicle as well. Four-wheel drive, lots of power, helps it, but I'm surprised it did so well because of the four-wheel drive potential for understeer. 
and the general heaviness of that system, but Lamborghini made it work, and that's very fast. Uh, another good vehicle, 650S. That was impressive in fourth place with a 114.57. Good showing from that. The Z06 manages to get into the top town with a 116.0. Um, yeah, that's less than a hundred. That's about a hundred thousand dollars. Which you can buy four of those for one GT, three of those for one Aventador, two and a half of those from Noble. Which um, the Noble did fare a little bit better in eighth place, but still, yeah. the um. R8 did pretty good in 11th place. The 488 got 12th place with a 116.7. Not very good from that vehicle. And the slowest vehicle on the track was the Nissan GTR 2017. 118.270. Yeah, that vehicle was not very fast on the track. It's 5 seconds slower than the 911. <laughs> 5 seconds is a lot of time around this track. And it's not a very big track. So yeah, it struggled, but overall, these vehicle, all these vehicles, besides maybe the Nissan, were incredibly fast, absolutely blistering lap times. For were relative, I say relatively slow in the racing car world. Um, they're road cars, and they've done these lap times. That's very, very impressive. Now, a half mile drag race, all assists turned off except for manual clutch, that was a manual. And the Noble here was 650 horsepower rear wheel drive from a Volvo XC90 engine. Not too bad, not the best for the rear wheel drive, but still, pretty good showing from the Noble here. Also, a little surprised. Now, the GT3 RS does have a bit going for its rear, rear engine, which means and it gets a lot of traction off the line, but it only has 493 horsepower, so it doesn't quite have enough. Because when you're playing against cars with 750 horsepower, 600 horsepower, 400 is nice. It's just not quite good enough. Now the R8 is pretty much the ideal candidate. 400 horse or four-wheel drive, lots of power from a V10 engine, very fast. But I don't know, something didn't go right with it. I, I got all my shifts right, I got the launch right, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't very fast in the half mile. I don't know what it was. Maybe it didn't have that mid-range acceleration. But yeah, for whatever reason, it did not do very well on this challenge, which I found to be very an interesting result. And on to the rankings. So, the fastest half mile was, somehow, the GT. I don't know how that worked. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great car, 647 horsepower, but it's rear wheel drive, and yeah, it, it won with a 15.849. Second place was very close to 911 GT2 RS. Once again, rear engine, but this time it has 600 horsepower, so it doesn't lap the GT3 RS's sluggish speed. Um, third place, we'll go to the 488. Very good showing for that 488 with a 15.950. Very good showing for that. That was, those top three was a bit of a surprise. The Porsche to a lesser extent because it's re-engined, but the Ford and the Ferrari were phenomenal in this. Um, a little bit further down the road, I'm not going to do all of them, but another surprising one was the 650S in fourth place. That's very good showing again with a 16.066. Yeah, the R8, it just didn't do well in 10th place, although 16.433. Thought it would do better. Thought it would do better. Um, the track focused Viper did it in 14th place with a 17.267. And once again, the sluggish GTR 2017 did it in 17.301 seconds. Yeah, the four-wheel drive cars struggled. There's a, there's only one four-wheel drive car in the top five, and that's the Aventador SV. Yeah, it's very... I don't know what it was. I remember, I had trash control also. Theoretically, the four-wheel drive car should have the advantage, but... They just didn't. And I found that to be very interesting. And I, I was slightly confused. By slightly, I mean very confused. But, yeah, I, the half-mile through with some very interesting results. 
Our final challenge will be 0 to 100 miles an hour to 0 again to test acceleration and braking. And the McLaren here was not very good. I will be honest. It's kind of a poor, a cheaper, slower version of the 650. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, it's a nice car, but it's not really good enough for the rest of this field. It's kind of outclassed by everything except a few cars. Now, the Aventador SEO is likely to be very good at this with four-wheel drive and 700 plus horsepower. And yeah, it, it was pretty good. It was pretty darn good at this, if I won't be honest. Incredible acceleration, very good brakes. And yeah, it's just a very solid machine. No faults with it at all, really. Four-wheel drive does help it get off the line with pretty much no wheel spin. And yeah, just overall very good under brakes especially. Now the new ACR Viper is an incredible vehicle on the track, it's very good handling. And it, <clears throat> in a straightaway it's not too good because of that giant wheel on the back. Yes, it gives it lots of downforce and is very good, but the speed is not so helpful. However, the brakes are absolutely ginormous and stop it on a dime. So that means the Viper, <clears throat> although not very fast camp to speed, is pretty good. That and, um, well, unlike pretty much every other vehicle that we've seen so far, the Viper can do this. The Viper can wheel spin. Which is the important part. That is just an important part of every, of every American car. Kind of fun. Who doesn't like that? Who doesn't like just doing donuts like a madman? And on to the times. Again, it's somehow a first place with a 4 GT 8.41 seconds. Now, I will say the GT does have phenomenal brakes. It is incredible. Besides maybe the ACR and the 911, it has the best brakes here. And second place will go to the Aventador SV with a 8.72. Again, that four-wheel drive launch helping it a lot. Very good showing from that. Third place is the best one, the 650S. McLaren does an 8.78, I'm sorry, an 8.73, 8.73, I can read. Getting a very solid third place, very respectable from that car. Um, the Viper does a bit better in 8th place than an 80, was an 8.87, simply due to its brakes, I think. The NSX. It's a well-deserved 10th place thanks to that four-wheel drive hybrid system. Working magic there and pretty good brakes on that as well. The GT3 again struggling with acceleration and speed in 13th place in the 9.60. And once again, the Nissan GTR at the very bottom of the table in 15th place with a 10 seconds. Zero to 100 is here. That's really slow. That's horrible. I'm sorry, but it is. It's just awful. <laughs> yeah, the, the GTR was not doing good. The, the GTR was not a happy camper in this one. <laughs> and the winner is the Ford GT with 239 points. It'll be it'll go into first place, getting first place in the half mile and the zero to hundred zero. Second place in the lap time. Very good showing from that vehicle. Um. Yeah, it's ridiculously good. Second place, rather close to it, um, the 911 GT2 RS with 219 points. Another very fantastic machine. Third place will be the Aventador SV. Well, it didn't do two well and a half mile with fifth place. It's third place in the lap time and second place in zero to hundred to zero. We'll give it 208 points. And a surprise for me was the 48. The 48, despite struggling in the lap time, getting a 12th place in the lap time, its half mile drag and the 0 to 100 to 0 times will put it in the 5th place with 178 points, beating the 458 by 7 points, which is in 6th place with 171 points. Which is very interesting. The 48 actually managed to beat the 458. Um, another very good showing 
Well, it's a 650 S in fourth place, 204 points. Very fantastic. I love that car. Um, the Viper ACR managed to get into the top 10 with 144 points in ninth place. Overall, good showing, except for the half mile drag, as you might expect from all that downforce, but good lap time and good 0 to 100 to 0 time thanks to those big old brakes and big old downforce. Um, the last car in the top 10 was the old. Let's see, newest GT3 RS. In the 10th place was 138 points. Struggling in the, in the half mile and 0 hard to 0, but making it up in the lap time. The Huracan, the older Lamborghini, did good in 7th place. Good showing from that. The Z06 was not very good. It's in 14th place, 123 points. It just couldn't compete. It was it beat some vehicles, got in the top 10 on the lap time, but its lack of stop, top speed and mid-range acceleration meant it got a 13th in the half mile and 14th in the 0 higher to 0. Just didn't do good enough. It's a good car. It's a fantastic car for the money. Arguably one of the best here. But it's just not good enough for this field. And finally, in last place, losing at every single event it ever competed in, the Nissan GTR 2017. With a 118.29, oh, sorry. With 110 points, read the wrong thing. Trust me, I know my score sheet, really I do. 110 points, it almost, it lost to the Z06 in every category. It lost to everything, it's last place in absolutely every event. Yeah, that car struggled. It really did, really did struggle. Now, I would argue the true winner here is Porsche, because they turned the old 911 GT2 RS, which was not very good, we'll be honest. So it was a little slow, wasn't very good through the corners because it looked at the front end up. It basically took the weight off the front tires and it had horrendous understeer. And they turned it into one of the best supercars in the world. That's very good. That is a phenomenal thing, and just five, and it, took, it took them a long time, five years, but it is a, the 911 GT2 is an incredible machine. It's probably the best Porsche I've ever driven. It holds the rear-wheel drive Nuremberg lap record. It beat the 918 around the lap, the Nuremberg. It's a phenomenal machine. And although the GT wins in points, and around the racetrack, it, I would argue they have made the most progress, Porsche. But that is it for this episode of Forza Motorsports. I'll be back with more. Now, doing all these points and all this stuff is very fun or very interesting. But how would each, how would the top four cars fare in a full-on race? So. I took the top four, I chose the slowest vehicle, the 650S, which was in fourth place, and took them racing against one another on Watkins Glen. Six cars for each manufacturer, so we have 24 cars in this lobby, and uh, yeah, I took them to Watkins Glen because, well, why not? Let's, I wanted to see how each of them were fair. Now, I was in the, the blue McLaren here, took a dive on the 911 GT2. Going too wide through the bus stop, and I'm holding it around the outside just about. Going on the outside of the uh, Aventador, I wasn't planning on doing that, but it worked. The McLaren is going on the, on the inside of the Aventador. The Porsche has run wide, and the McLaren will get that position. The Aventador has fallen off track, ignore that. <laughs> yeah, it was very frantic, these opening laps. It was absolute mayhem. Besides the Aventador slightly getting lost, there wasn't any really ca real chaos. There was some rubbing, but that's what happens in racing, you know? That is just what happens. And I see this field got spread out pretty quickly. It didn't get spread out. We were all very close. We just didn't really have any overtaking opportunities, except for that four was going too wide on the Aventador. And it will get that position stuck. Yeah, it was frantic these of this opening lap. It was a five lap race, I believe, or five or six, I don't remember, but yeah, you can see the Aventador is fighting back. I might have ran wide. Ignore that. That didn't happen, but absolute, absolute blast. 
As 9-11 here was trying to get back the position that that McLaren took the orange one in front of him. He was on a recovery drive essentially to try and get that position back and see what's a little bit of rubbing, a little bit of racing. Ventures are running wide, going too wide in the background. He's going too wide with that McLaren. And he's trying to go around the outside and it will not work. However, he is on the inside, but the McLaren shuts the door on him. The GT is now trying for the inside, taking the hit lane. He will get that inside maneuver, but will he have the acceleration cadet? And yes, he will. The, the 4 GT is slightly faster than that 911. As the two Lamborghinis go side by side through the first corner, the black one backs out wisely, giving the position to the lime green one. Yeah. Lots of action going on. This is the second or third lap. You can see the the speed of the um, event door closing behind. It has 150 more horsepower. And yeah, it's slowly reeling in that 911, which has a lot of downforce. But it's not quite able to do anything about it just because the, the, um, the Porsche can handle just that little bit better than the uh, Ventador. You can see it around the lap times, it did a lot better. And I don't know why, but they were running a little bit wide. The, yeah, they tended to struggle with that corner a, a little bit. But now, oh, and the Aventadors are going side by side around this corner. I don't know what it is about the corner, but they did not like that corner. Just the AIs just did not like that corner at all. Now this 4GT was trying to make his way through the field, and his next target was a bright yellow 911 GT2. He caught in the back of it very quickly. Now he just has to try and overtake it. It is about the same through the corners and much better under on the acceleration front thanks to that power. And he goes from the inside, takes a little bit of a dive, takes a shell line, and GT2 does hold it on the outside. Very good turn for that 911, but does not have the straight line speed of that Ford. And he will fall back into line behind. He'll try and go for the cutback, but doesn't quite have enough time. He doesn't have enough braking, so he will have to fall back into line, and the Ford will maintain his position. And we are seeing this relatively um, throughout the field. We, you see how it's a bit of a train. There were a few battles going on, but with these cars, it is likely to get spread out a little bit quicker just because of the speed of them. Where if you make one mistake, it costs you five or six seconds as opposed to a couple of tenths of a second like an A-class car. A-class car make a mistake with like a couple of tenths of a second. But due to the speed of these vehicles, it is a lot faster. Now we have a pair of GTs trying to overtake the top two positions, which was a Porsche and a McLaren that were leading the way. With the GT, GTs freezing past, you can see the speed of the GTs heading into the first corner. The Porsche tries to outbreak him and he actually succeeds but he still has that inside doesn't quite have the acceleration though due to the rear engine nature of that GT um, 2 and the Ford will have to fall back into line with his friend but the McLaren and the Porsche up in front were being caught quite quickly and now we get to, again head to a straightaway we do have the bus stop coming up and the GT will be able to breeze past the 911, and the 911 just has no answer to the GTs. You can see the other GT on the background put out on the outside of the 911. That's a very good showing from that. And now the GT had to had to overtake a McLaren, and you would expect the McLaren, the GT, to breeze by the McLaren, but that's simply not the case. I don't know how, but the GT just could not get past that McLaren. He was, and he, I think he ended up trying for a good five or six minutes just could not get past it. The McLaren was defending very well. This is not me, this is an AI. And the, the GT just could not get past that little McLaren. Um, now, yeah, McLaren did an incredible job holding off the GT. Even as the GT goes, tries to go by him, he cuts off, he cuts off the inside, stops the GT from going, doing what it did to the Porsche. And since the McLaren has that little bit more straight line speed than the Porsche, he can defend against that the, the Ford, and he's the McLaren starting to make a bit of a train. He's is all over the GT's all over the back of that 650, but it's not getting by. <laughs> it's a very, it was very interesting watching this on the replays because I was a bit further back at this point, but 
Yeah, the McLaren was frantically trying to hold off. Eventually, the, McL the McLaren will lose out just because of the straight line speed. But he does have a fight back. He does actually try and fight back. He almost held her on the outside, but just loses out in terms of straight line speed. Yeah, the, the GT was just faster than everything else in the field, except for maybe the um, Aventador. It was, it was slower than the Aventador, but everything else, it was just faster than. And if you it, it was only a matter of time. It was only a matter of time. And yeah, now the McLaren has to just try and run away from that second GT before it catches him. I was making relatively good progress in the McLaren. I'm slipstreaming out the GT here. And I was going to go in for a dive on the brakes using the slipstream. And I will get the GT overtaken. Dive on the Ventador and try to overtake. I'm in 6th place right now. And the, yeah, this is the highest place of Ventador in 5th place. You can see the 911 trying to go around the outside of the GT. It didn't quite work. He went off the track a little bit in the background. Um, yeah, I mean, the, they were going for some real risky maneuvers, and they weren't quite paying off all the time. Yeah, the event, the Porsche fell off a lot. It, it really lost the track, because once you get outside that bowl, you're pretty much screwed. You lost four positions in that attempt to overtake. I mean, props to you for trying, but that was not a smart idea. And I'm trying to slipstream the event where it's not, it is just about working. I'm going to try and go for a dive on the brakes, and I will get him on the end. He's fighting back. I'm going to give him some space. He will maintain the outside. That was a very good overtake. Or a very good defense, I'll say. Very good defense. So I will then go on the outside of him. I'll try it. I'll try it. He's giving me space. I will just go on the outside. But now it's a drag race. Once again, I'm stuck on the outside. But he will back out of it. I will gain the position. Now the GT's on the back of the of the of, of Ensenor. And I will run away. Run away, run away, run away. The use of the GT closes so fast on these cars, and it's just ridiculous how fast that GT is around the track. And you can see he's gonna go, he may go for a dime on the brakes, I'm trying to catch up. You can see the GT's going for the inside now. Yeah. Very, very good racing. I was surprised, I was very proud of the guys, because they were doing a very good job. And now here's the even more impressive thing. The McLaren in second, that I saw earlier, is still in second at this point. Still being hunted down by another GT, but the laps are running down. We only have a few more laps left for that GT to try and overtake, and it's not doing it. It was very interesting watching this, because the GT got very, very close, but not quite close enough to take advantage of the straights. It just didn't have the ability to overtake right now, so I was very intrigued by this, because Theoretically, the McLaren should have been breezed by. It was the slowest vehicle on the test track, and yet we have two in the top five. <clears throat> that was very. I was amazed. I was very proud of the McLaren here because I was. I you don't look at the McLaren and say that is a rival to some of the best supercars in the world. It's a great car, but you don't expect it to be a rival to the best in the world. And yet. It's holding on to second place very well. It's held on for a few laps now. And it was very impressive. I was very proud of the McLaren here for holding on. And still holding on to a top three. As we approached the end of the race, it was the highest place of Ventor struggling to hold on to his position in sixth place. Being hunted down by a GT, a McLaren, and a Porsche. Yeah, the Aventadors were struggling around Walking Splint. I don't know why. It has some decent straights for him. Has some long back straight. And it was holding on. The McLaren is right behind the GT, but the GT just has a straight line speed. And the Aventador has straight line speed over everybody. But you can see it's the, the GT just catches up so much during braking and handling. The GT is so much better handling than the Aventador. And there's a lot later. The GT, I believe, is 3,000 pounds, that GT. The Aventador is 7,500 pounds thanks to the four-wheel drive system. And yeah, it was, this is the highest place, sixth place. It was struggling a little bit, the Aventadors. Um, however, I would, I do believe that it would help hold on for the end of the race, because this is the, one of the final laps of the race. And 
The GT was catching, giving another lap or two, and the GT would have caught up. But I don't think it would have caught up fast enough. You can see it here, it's going from the inside, but... Yeah, the event store was not very good. It does hold it. I mean, it's a little cheaty. Uh, they were going for desperate measures. <laughs> it, it was slightly cheaty how the event defended, but you know what? Whatever. 